Hey everybody and welcome to, welcome back to the future of photography. Um, new listeners and existing listeners alike are most welcome and we have all the team here for you this week. Uh, we are trialling out another new way of recording so I can see all my compadres and I can smile and wave at them and yeah. all is good with the world, all is good with the world. And if we manage to look good on the video thing that we do, we might even release this as a video but no promises just yet well if you told us that before i'd have got dressed chris <laughs> <laughs> you can't spring surprises on a fella like that it's just not fair um, that's the way i that's that's the way i roll <laughs> <laughs> okay well there you go everybody you can hear chris uh Ema, how you doing i'm doing good how are you doing I'm Everybody. very well, thank you. Yes, um, I, I'm, I'm f- full of beans today, actually, which is nice. And Jeremiah, how are you doing? Uh, very, very good. I thought um, I felt very proud of myself. I've done a lot of work, creative work this week and uh, put up a whole bunch of stuff uh, on my website, which I will be shamelessly uh, promoting during the pick part of our program. Oh, well, why wait till then? What is your website? <laughs> <laughs> Oddly, it's www.mynamechichik.com. Excellent. I didn't know you'd been doing that. I shall go and have a look after we've finished H- recording. Had I, had I known, I would be putting this on the screen right now. <laughs> well, oh. there you go. You can wait and, and um, uh, you know, enter at your own risk. Really? So, <laughs> anyway, okay, I think well, to... Today, I think, is my responsibility, and we are talking again, as we kind of circumnavigate our brain power here, talking about niche cameras, or niche cameras, however you want to pronounce it. Um, and my, my basic theme for this particular show is, does a camera alter the way we see when we go out into the world with it? So that's the underlying uh, question that I'm going to ask. And I'll visit one, two, three, four, five different cameras, uh, and we can discuss how that could possibly adjust our visual thinking and the way we kind of embrace the world visually um, as it pertains to technology. Sounds good. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to start with something rather simple. Um, it's the DX1. And the DX1, of course, I, I do have one um, and used it uh, quite frequently up to when the uh, new iPhone came out. Though it is, you know, close to 20 megapixels, it effectively is a lens, it plugs into your iPhone and um, gives you a very, very high quality image. Um, it's a very low footprint, so it doesn't, it doesn't require a tremendous amount of kind of finagling, uh, for those of you who know that word, uh, to adjust, to adjust the, the kind of um, text. So you can work it quite easily and, and uh, works on a microchip. And um, I've, I've put a little um, uh, connection to the DxO tests where they compare the sensor scores to like side by side with like Super Raw or a Canon uh, GX uh, G7X or a, a Nikon or Nikon as you guys say, um, a CyberShot, uh, an Olympus, um, a Lumix, and it it's quite significant how close they are in comparison and w- how they do their scores is they do it based on color depth, landscape, and sports low light. Um, some have lower scores in various areas, but such a small little unit that attaches to a unit which we have for doing what I would consider more high-end, high-quality, and beautiful um, kind of formatted images uh, is something that really does affect our um, thinking about how we use our our phones. The, one of the interesting things is I, I had one, used it a lot, and then I just stopped using it once the quality of the phone uh, kind of emerged. Um, but DxO is a very interesting company. They make very interesting software. Um, it, it's quite connected in terms of the application of film looks 
um, and adjustments. Uh, have any of you guys used DXO at all? Um, the, the one I haven't, and there's, um, I've talked to a few people who had one, and most of them didn't use it as much as they thought because it always required them to like assemble something before you could take the photo. And they, they didn't have it with them as a camera, but as an accessory to a smartphone. You how, know how? what? <laughs> I didn't know this camera existed. This show is bad for my bank balance, for starters, <laughs> because <laughs> this looks really good. And I didn't know that you could get such a thing, and, and now I kind of want it. <laughs> Oh, you don't oh, need it now, Amy. You've got a new phone. Yeah, but you know the, the portability you know. fact. I don't know how, why this hasn't come up before. Um, uh, well, I'll tell you what, really. yeah, Emer, uh, maybe I can dig mine out of the drawer where it presently resides and, and send it to you. So I, I'm not really using it. I'm, I'm over cameraed right now and, um, and happily so. But in terms of your work, I think it would be very, very interesting to see how kind of bumping up the megapixels or what you can do with the XO well, in your the world. I think it's the new, the noisiness in the new photos that's irritating me a little bit. And I, I'm not, I'm not competent enough to know how to get rid of it properly. On There's phone, a lot. So. Oh, I'm sure Chris and I can like just Post jump on edit, that. Yeah, but, with, uh, just like a know. lot of noise reduction, um, Including uh, Photoshop, I think. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, Imar, you have a brand new iPhone that is has got one of the best phone cameras in it. And yeah, it noisy just, photos? it's something about it that I, it's, it's, are they like too sharp? I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. There's something that I don't like about it. Okay, we'll, we'll do this in a, in a different mm. uh, setting, not here now, but... Um, I don't even have the words. I, I don't have maybe, the... Maybe, maybe it's, it's, a, it's a, a nomenclature issue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it is. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's not noise. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's sharpness. Maybe incompetency, <laughs> per perhaps. <laughs> but uh, I think the, the point of this is a, a particularly niche camera or lens. Mm. Yes. Um, so and, I, and I, I remember when this came out, and, and I was very tempted to buy one. And then um, I, I thought... Uh, I, I I thought I'd end up really with j just not using it because uh, the just the hassle factor. Um, it, it, is it? And I, but I did I did like the idea of it, and at the time it was quite um, nobody done anything quite like it at the time. I don't think had they. No. I was I mean, surprised I, to see how long it's out actually when I, then, then oh, I hadn't heard of it. <laughs> it's been out for a while because yeah. I, I think I. I think I must have got it when when I had a, a, a much reduced um, iPhone camera. I was very unhappy with the quality, though I like to carry something around in my pocket and yet wanted a high-quality image. I can see these kinds of things going way high now um, in just in terms of how you can adapt existing um, technologies that are available to us all the time and yet bump it up. So even if we end up with a, say, a 50 megapixel iPhone camera, somebody's going to come up with a, you know, gigabyte. Somebody's going to come up <laughs> with something always bigger, better, sharper. Um, no, but that's, and, you need that to sell, right? Uh, I mean, the marketing departments are all, are all over that. Wow, this is why we're having the ne the series of niche camera f conversations, isn't it? Because the marketing uh, departments don't necessarily uh, don't, don't don't necessarily know what it is that individual photographers want. And I know you can't do a whole global launch of a camera for an individual photographer, but um, you know th those manufacturers, given where we are in the world today, that the numbers of camera sales have dropped significantly. So you know we we could be lead we could be leading influencers here of 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 the cameras of the future. You know, we I should think I think we, we should, should take should ourselves more seriously and get an Instagram channel where we can have like <laughs> photos of our backs looking off into the distance. I think we should do. <laughs> research on how many uh what percentage of the marketing departments are actually photographers i, I love that, that a question. very important question <laughs> i do love that question and I'll, I'll i'll tell you why because it also kind of uh, it it does affect some of the things that i have to deal with in terms of uh selling pitching developing uh media in terms of film and television mm -hmm. so you think how much influence does the marketing department have on visionary progress? In other words, do, does the 
does the marketing department react to what they believe the consumer will want? Mm -hmm. uh, or does the marketing department just have responsibilities to sell what it is the engineering department or design department come up with? And is it a leading indicator or a following indicator? So for example, if we ask 100 photographers, 50, say, of, of a very, very high-end specialized artistic commercial and 50 just um, consumer-based hobbyists, what would be their ideal camera? We crunch it with AI and deliver that to the marketing department who go, this is what we need. They send that over to the engineering department and they come up with probably a concoction that nobody would buy. That's my guess. <laughs> I, I, I think like Homer Simpson's car. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I think that innovation does come from creative people, and it's the responsibility of marketing people to sell that through to the right audiences. Um, and then it's just a question of price, which brings me to my next camera. <laughs> this is the. <laughs> what can I say? This is a. Wild camera. I don't think it's out yet, but it is a, uh, it's called, let me just see, a YI Halo. It's the most, according to them, advanced 3D 360 camera. It is massive. It is expensive. Um, and if you go to the website, which is listed here, uh, yitechnology.com. Oh, look at that. SG, <laughs> it is an absolute beast of design, articulation, uh, engineering. And the software itself allows you to stitch. So this is, this is where 360 degree cameras and stitching could create some very fascinating uh, VR and AR experiences. Mm. Uh, I believe the camera will sell for close to twenty thousand dollars. That's and they wow. are and they're building this on their. It, it looks like they're building this on their consumer cameras uh, because Yi, the brand, um, yeah. is known yeah. for for GoPro knockoffs, and I have one of those. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I think I have one somewhere as well. Right, and and if you see the the the, the it exploded terrible. view in on the website, that is a bunch of those in a in a circle. Yeah. Yes, in that's a, right. Yeah, but wow. this is where the marketing kicks in because if you scroll down the page a bit. Uh, there, Chris. It says um, that that that's a design feature. It's modular, and you can replace <laughs> the cameras. Of that's course. right. Makes yeah. sense. Uh, uh, the the reason I bring this up is let's just say that uh, your uh, rich uncle gave you one of these cameras. Boom! It arrived in a box. You took it out, and you went, "Wow, uh, I love it." I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you said, uh, well, I'm going to go out into the world and dot, dot, dot. What am I going to shoot? Yeah. So the, the point that Everything I'm making. Everything is one of these, surely. Yeah. Well, right, <laughs> with a, just no hang, it, hang it out your door and you shot the world. Yeah. I, I think the point, and I, I kind of uh, circle back to the DX1. If you had a little DX1 in your pocket and you were going out in the hammer and nail kind of metaphor, which is, you know, uh, if you're a hammer, everything <laughs> looks like a nail, right? So if you have one of those, you'd be looking at stuff you can shoot with your iPhone that requires something a little more robust, something sharper, mm. something with more definition. And so as you were walking to take pictures, your entire focus would be on that aesthetic, so there'd be a complete connection between what you were looking for or trying to experience or interpret or express um, with that little digit. Um, on the other hand, if you were hauling around this YI Halo camera, you'd be trying to look in a completely different way. You, would, you wouldn't be thinking about frames. You wouldn't be thinking about um, composition. You'd be looking at total environments, complete lighting, how to stitch things, what the uh, viewer would, would feel. And so your, your um, 
experience of the world with that camera would be completely different than your experience of the world with the other. And so while, you know, some of us here, I won't mention who's not, uh, are technical geeks, and, and we embrace, we embrace uh, those kinds of innovative um, engineering feats and like love to play with them. Also, we're boys, so we love playing with those toys. So, um, and that is not meant as a sexist comment. It's meant as one of Thank those, you. you know, if you give a boy it's a not taken truck, as a sexist they, comment. They, sm they <laughs> smash it. If you give, anyway, you know what I'm saying. Um, I true. think, I hope. Um, the point that I'm really kind of getting at is there is that um, focus of us as photographers that often require us to to invest our ways of seeing with our equipment and and i'm going to circle back to what i consider a normal camera and if that camera is um somehow the kind of reduction a more of a mediocre um, way of seeing and that using niche cameras heighten and sharpen one's vision of the world um, so I'll, I'll move on to my next choice. Uh, this is a, a camera I've always lusted after. Um, I've used them a few times. I was in <sighs> Africa with a cinematographer oh, friend who had it and used it. It's a Linhoff Technorama 617.3. This is a mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful uh, medium format camera, wide with unbelievably sharp lenses. And um, as a panoramic um, carry-around camera, um, it, it kind of, again, refocuses our attention into, well, that kind of framing. So we then start to see the world in uh, widescreen. Uh, we see it framed carefully, uh, certainly sharp. Um, the horizon line is extremely important to us generally because it's a a little bit of a beast to handhold though very very possible and friendly um and you know there are three examples here of how that would um shift and change our way of looking at the world just walking around with these things um again if you have a what i would consider a straight up consumer camera um Let's just say, you know, a Canon 5D, for example, without a fancy lens, not looking at anybody, but let's say you had that. <laughs> just a regular, even a pancake lens. You went out with it. It's the kind of camera that you could think, well, that could kind of do it. Anything. I don't think that particular camera focuses your attention on the micro details. It may kind of be easy uh, to use in terms of subject. So you're looking to be inspired by the subject and then capture as you can with it. Um, so it's a, again, it's a very different way of reacting to the world, having what we have come to know as a kind of a normal camera with a normal interchangeable lens system, as opposed to a highly specialized camera. Um, I think this is a really interesting point of view, Jeremiah, because I, I got, um, I, I, I experienced this with, with ranges of different cameras that I, I see, or I, I look for th different things depending on which camera I have with me. And sometimes I choose a camera because it's fun and then have to get my brain into seeing in the way that camera sees. And sometimes I have a vision of how I want to capture something and then go and choose the camera because I know that's the camera that can give me the best chance of of of, uh, of achieving that and so it, it it does make a difference um i, I mean these are all i that that linhoff i i love one of those and um, i love the idea that you think of it as a walk around camera it's six by 17 <laughs> and for those that maybe don't know what six by 17 actually implies it's a um, dream of mine it is yeah, yeah this well, camera for, for those that are less well versed in in the world of medium format film uh, that means that the negative that you shoot with this camera is six centimeters by 17 centimeters <laughs> yeah. um it is 
it, it it is uh they, they are extraordinary beasts uh they they really are i mean i have a six by 12 uh pinhole camera i think um uh, i think it's a six by 12 but I, I, the six by 17 just goes it, it's just nuts so i love the idea of of you saying that this is just a, a walk around camera it does, i don't well, think i have any pockets it would fit you in. could you could <laughs> go cheaper uh get the get something similar with the wide lux uh the medium format version <laughs> yeah, uh, right. jeff jeff bridges is known for shooting yeah, photos yeah. on set with that and uh um it it, it gives you the, the similar coverage but it does it with a turret lens which moves so you yes. can do li little motion uh, uh, artifacts in that i used a wide lux and like many years ago uh my you know i i bought one used i used it forever uh, it eventually jammed the lenses are not very good and it uses 35 millimeter film oh, though it, the format is pretty damn good. Me mechanically, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a nightmare, I think. But yeah. hey, but what you get out of that? I mean, those photo books by Jeff Bridges are amazing. Yes. Oh, they're great. Yeah, they're, they're great. Yeah, they are. But, yeah. but they're, they're also great because the subjects are great. And he, of course, he got got into. But going back to technology, Emer, uh, like that picture you posted, that sort of semi three D picture. Uh, oh yeah, uh, 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 That's this morning I saw that. You didn't mm. run that past me but because you had that camera and because you use that software you went out to start to find those things did you not no actually there you go <laughs> a, a few a few months ago um, my check, highlight check, of the check, week please. was something similar um which an app that i can't remember the name of if anybody else does but you had to take the photo in the app this one allows you to uh, put the effect on a pre-existing photo, mm. so oh. which so is even it. more fakes fun. It. Fakes it. Yeah. Mm. So, but I can then do that to my edited pictures, which opens up a whole load of. And I only got it yesterday, so it's just oh. I was like, ooh. But you know, yeah. possibilities, perhaps for something a little so, bit different. But yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting. I guess that that is using uh, the same technologies as when they kind of build three three D movies from yeah. two D movies, right? They use AI to kind of do a little wraparound, even though this yeah. is more gifs and a little bit frames on either side. Um, for my last camera, uh, it's another camera that I, I I want one of these. It's uh, it's made by Psyonix. I know people must spend a fortune in coming up with these names, oh. but this uh, these are a series of low light. Basically, they're night scopes attached to a camera, and uh, they're quite again they're quite pricey. But uh, the Aurora Pro um, is, I mean, it's a thousand dollar night vision camera. But you know, you're not going to take this to the desert and shoot during the day. You're going to be <laughs> you're going to go like. I'm leaving as soon as the sun sunsets, and I'm going to be, you know, exploring the world completely through a, um, you know, the, a vision of darkness and and what constitutes light and how to look at nightlight and light pollution and astrophotography, even though we could be on on a downtown street in a kind of urban environment, we would be looking at it very differently if we had one of these. Um, I, I was systems. really intrigued by these ones. Actually, I, I, I'd love to have something like this. Um, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it in, yes it just intrigues me um i the the idea of being able to build back because it i think you'd get something that was quite unnerving because you know we are used to seeing color mm. lit by the sun and i think if you're adding it back um it's like on a night when it's it's very bright moonlight perhaps and al almost enough moonlight to see color and you know you or at least your brain fills in the gaps doesn't it and and it, it looks it looks slightly unnerving and, and slightly um otherworldly so i i would imagine it'd be quite a lot of fun playing with this um this sort of thing um i i did i was i was all i was thinking oh i must find out what the price is for these and 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 yeah what i can get out of them um but i don't i mean they're not really aimed at photographers are they um in the, mm -hmm. they're they're more aimed at people who are out and about at night because they're they're quite expensive and they only have very very uh low pixel resolution on them 
Well, some of them know. I think the higher end one is is relatively uh, good. I mean, you know, you know the, but the the, the only brush the only brush I've had with these night vision kind of things was. Uh, at a at a friend who owns a photo lab and uh, his big development machine is in the dark and when he needs to go in there and do something then he puts in <laughs> puts on this night vision thing that he got from like military surplus or something and it's it's one of these infrared lit green screens and it's grainy and it's just good no. enough to to uh, to adjust something at the machine without shedding any visible light on it so, he expects combat in the dark room with any exactly, but this this, this <laughs> one this one looks like it's actually giving you photos, as in yeah. like photos that you yeah. would expect to see, colors that you would ex expect to see. So that's a that's a bit a bit of a different beast. Yeah, Imar, have you, have you used any of the slow shutter night work ultra sensitive apps on your new phone? I haven't actually. No, no. I, I was your kind of, you know, there's my homework. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not something I've tried. I do um, the night vision, and I think I've used it a couple of times on the iPhone. But it it brightens things too much. It doesn't. It looks unrealistic or something. And just um, if you can get it at all, I prefer a blurry shot if I could get it at all with the nice light in it. By the way, then, I um, love that you said unrealistic. I, I, I just <laughs> love that you said that because if we talk about what is realistic in terms of how we completely see, different that, episode. Don't that go that. I was going to say that is an now. entire <laughs> episode, uh, you know. Of of and 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 by the way, uh, I I think I've I've posted something on my Instagram uh, today. Another kind of self congratulatory um, point. <laughs> Um, which is uh, some of my new experimental stuff, which is really based on sculpture and foundry and casting. But it, it is, in fact, a landscape totally constructed out of polygons. Looks very real, sort of. Uh, it's, um, I used HDRI, which is an odd way of saying, you know, artificial sunlight uh, skybox. And the landscape is completely constructed and built from... Um, or, or applied uh, to it was uh, rusted iron. But it looks like a, 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 a proper mountain range. Um, it really does. And, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, so realism is... Uh, the master uh, of illusion. It's yeah. a very fungible <laughs> point. Well, how about uh, Picks of the Week? Picks Sounds of good, week. as long as I don't have to start because I'm still scrambling. <laughs> okay, I'll go first, will I? Sure. And we've That's just right. been talking about, we just, well, it kind of fits in, we've just been talking about, it's called Loopsy. And um, you can't really do that much with it. But um, what you can do is just, I found quite fascinating and it kind of blew my mind. If you've ever tried to do a still photo in After Effects or something, when you're not very good at it, <laughs> then um, <laughs> you'll appreciate this um, for like how... how quick and, and easy it is you can put loads of crazy effect. like for your more unrealistic stuff jeremiah in inverted commas i think you could probably use it a, a little bit more creatively than even um there's some kind of cheesy looking stickers and things but there's other things that are that make up for the there's nice couple of nice filters and some nice flares and, and effects in there so um yeah check it out if if you want to um yeah have a little play because like, play yeah. is important very important. I, I, I like they said 3D. So uh, is it possible to take the 3D and and actually split the image into two so that you could create uh, multiples, um, anaglyphs or lenticulars? Is it, do you know? I, you know what? Those kind of things are popping into my mind at the moment. So... When I've explored that a little bit further, like I, the videos that I take out of that, maybe I can take in somewhere else and uh, do some interesting things with them. I don't know yet. We'll yeah, I, I, yeah. I think I think a, a, a an app that will allow one to split off and create uh, high quality lenticulars would be quite beautiful. I did a show uh, in 2018 of lenticular black and whites, which oh. was really yeah. Sold out. Can't really put that on a website, though. <laughs> it feel like you need you need a screen. You you need to send everyone a lenticular lens postcard. Of, uh, po <laughs> no, no, the, the, something to put in front of their screen and then adjust. Oh, it yeah, and then, yeah, the lenses. Right. And then you could you could do that probably. 
would be expensive. Adrian, what's your pick? Uh, okay, um, I've got something that is uh, is a fun thing this week that I have been subscribed to for years, um, and and it has got some amazing macro photography in it um and it is a website called miniaturecalendar.com this is and so cute i've seen pictures from that somewhere and on the blogs um oh, so, you so just that's where they're it, from okay get it get it in your rss reader yeah get it in your feed um and you get them every day and every they day are just brilliant yeah amazing now this is uh um this is oh. uh, one person oh my I God. Think, that's <laughs> oh my doing God. this stuff. One person, and he's been doing it. If you look at the back catalogue since um, <laughs> since 2011, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure every, almost, almost every day, um, he has published a, a macro scene. He has lots of little tiny people figures. And, and, and the, the, the thing that he does is he takes real world sort of non, you know, um, real world stuff but it reimagines them for macro photography so today's one as we record this is is a little campsite in a forest except the trees are actually broccoli Mm. (laughs) um there's one i would encourage everybody to go and look at the 8th of june 2020 this one caught my eye even amongst a, a body of work that is truly amazing um, this one caught my eye and this is a surf scene so there's a yeah, tiny little oh, miniature surfer cool. <laughs> but he's surfing inside a blue baseball glove oh, <laughs> it's yeah. very very cool and it's using oh. the fingers of the baseball glove as the surf uh, and there's a little surfer and there's a little tree and mm. and it just just it's just a joy this is something is. that you should subscribe to and it will bring joy to your day every day guaranteed this is my new favorite site. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Question. Uh, this Wonderful. is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I yes. like it. I so it. I found something in the meanwhile, right, right. Um, which is something that has come out, uh, a, no, not not too long ago, and it uh, it again has to do with uh, Starlink, the satellite constellation that SpaceX is shooting up to bring internet from the sky to the world and uh, everyone will be happy ever after but the problem was that the our uh, as- astronomers had issues with that because there's all these satellites up there when this thing is done there will be thousands more satellites up there in lower earth orbit so they reflect light back onto the earth and then if you do an astrophotography or if you do uh, as- astronomy you will have inevitably have some star trails over or satellite trails over your pictures and that's not nice and a lot of people were up in arms about this and um spacex has been on one recent satellite they've actually painted some of the brighter parts black to see if that works they're shooting things up every every few weeks they're shooting another 60 uh, up right now and they had painted something black but that turned out to not work because it was uh, heating up the satellite too much so and it was reflecting too much infrared, so which was also turning into a problem. But now what they are doing is they have built, um, they've listened and they've built what they now call the visor sat. So they have a sun visor that flips open and covers exactly, goes exactly between the sun and the reflect, reflective parts. And this way they uh, manage to reduce the brightness quite a bit and make the the astronomical community a bit more happy so from now on they will do that and i found this uh, remarkable not sure how good it will be they still waiting for the first one the test one to be up at the final orbit but that's pretty much uh somewhat how, how, photography related how do you think uh, having all those satellites and let's say one gigabyte um internet globally um will change uh, the world well we could do this show in 4k and it would be super easy to do so <laughs> as we walk Nobody through the woods to see this show in 4k as we're out <laughs> <on the beach. laughs> I definitely don't. So that, it's an interesting well, question, Jeremiah. And I think I think there are you know if if you're talking about that sort of thing, um, I you, you really need to 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 think about how how people have access to to the internet today. 
I mean, you yeah. know, sit, sitting here as I do where I live, just outside of London, uh, with, with a fiber optic cable, um, I I don't know that that would change my life very much. But but then for for uh, the possibly the vast majority of the, of the world population, it would be th- thoroughly life changing. So, especially if it if it was free. Mm. Well, yeah, I chances. don't think it will be free, but <laughs> <laughs> no, hmm, I think you're right. Anyway, um, uh, in uh, in what I kind of intimated was was uh, my um, self promotion moment. Uh, I'm going to have uh, a little bit of announcement of my own websites. I put up some new folios this week, um, and it's www. Chechik dot com c h e c h i k, and on it, um, you know, you will see a uh, a tremendous uh, amount of different folios that take you through sort of false histories of man, some more traditional photography uh, in the, those folios as well. Um, there's a lot more that I obviously haven't room for on the website um credits and uh exhibits recently and um about me um and when i say about me i've i've put my genome up (laughs) so so if you really want to know about me you know you you can read my genome it's i think about 400 pages and and just see what kind of genes have kind of contributed to me at this point so there you go. That's me. That's the website. Uh, I hope you'll find it inspiring, entertaining, and somewhat interesting. So, there you so, go. so some of the uh, some of the titles uh, on your website, of course, I recognise. I've looked at stuff before. Um, the uh, which particularly are the new bits, uh, the Great War, and ah, okay. uh, and and four twenty two. Um, that one is BC. yeah, yeah. I just love oh, I four, I'd four, seen the four twenty two stuff. I thought I'd seen that you're recently, thinking, but I um. I think, well, uh, you may be confusing it with ro- the stuff I did in Rome and Alexandria, which is oh, uh, I see. a little okay. later. These are kind of formal shots of life on the street in, you know, I guess just before the uh, Peloponnesian Wars in Athens. Mm-hmm. Just before things turn to shit. <laughs> so there you go. Um, but that, that, the, the feeling is, uh, you know, in the work generally, I, I, I'm just trying to take people in a historical um, experience that is not cinematic, but just is familiar. Because what I, what I think we see is that Nothing really changes. People go to work, they hang out, they, they you know what I mean? They, they enjoy life. There is war, there is disease, um, there, there's family. Um, all of these things are, in, in a way, the more mundane the shots, uh, the more I like them uh, because they kind of connect us with our personal history. Um, so that's the intention of the, of the piece. Good stuff. Of course, the great Very great good. war is a little different. All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so everyone, visit Jeremiah's website and the photos and the the photos. Right? Is it? Do, can, right. can we call them photos? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I I consider myself a digital artist who is using more traditional uh, photographic um, techniques in order to deliver mm-hmm. the images, and and of course, you know, he, like I, on the website itself, the, the website is just a, you know a gallery of what the real work is, which are prints. Um, and the print, printing of these pictures, of which you can see these folios behind me, um, are are you know crafted very specifically, as I've talked about in the past. So the, Where the is end your, result, your greatest hmm? source for your imagery, would you say? Uh, uh, well, it it just depends on on the <coughs> point in history. Um, if I can find uh, a game. Uh, I mean, on on the website you'll see there's a something called Luna. Those are completely mm. con- created by by me, and like, uh, yeah. I'm so I, I I do have a whole body of work that's ju- that is not from games, mm, but uses mm. the same engines and whatnot and yeah. lighting. 
But when I discover a game that has an interesting context, I try to kind of dive in, learn the game, and and move away from the gameplay as much as possible. Mm. Um, each game has its own kind of anachronisms and interesting ways of pulling images out on a high quality. And then, you know, th there's the capture moment of trying to find the moment, like street photography, no no different, really, just that experience. Mm. It takes a long time to kind of find these things capture them in the right way, edit them, and then integrate them into Lightroom, Photoshop, and whatever else. You know, and, and, if you, and, if, and, if, and if you're on, a, on an online server and other players are there, they will step into your photo at the, most, at the worst possible moment. It's like real life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, bombing, yeah. <laughs> no, it, you know, it, it's, it, it, experientially, it feels very much like street photography to me. Yeah. You know, practicing both it, it, it's very similar and when you're in the moment it's exactly like that because you are there so and i think with with vr as it gets to be more um sharper better more robust uh i'll find myself um more integrated into that right now the quality is not what i want so mm. Mm. well <laughs> it, 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 it just ain't and by the way sometimes the quality is very very good and i have to decrease it i have yes. to make it more raw the great war is a great example of yes. taking images that are quite in a way cartoony and really creating the you know the look and feel of of traditional combat photographers so all right mm. ah <sighs> so, so there, um another I think we have another episode in the can. Um, well, let's see. Everyone, if you want uh, to find out more about us, um, maybe you've just found us online somewhere, go to thefutureofphotography.com, which is our website. You'll find uh, 135 other episodes there. You can find us on Twitter and on Instagram. We are at TFOP now there, TFOP, N-O-W. And we will be back next week with another interesting episode. Until then, everyone, take care and bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>